Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. You know, Alan Greenspan once said, we really can't forecast all that well. And yet we pretend that we can, but we really can't. And still, so-called sophisticated investors on Wall Street called him the maestro. Because over and over, Greenspan forecasted, signaled, that is, to them that they would continue to make a whole lot of ill-gotten gains under his watch, the so-called Greenspan put. Now, I'm going to throw it to Stacey Herbert in a second here, but I just want to mention before I do that StartCoin, which is the coin I developed to compete with Alan Greenspan, to compete with Mario Draghi, to compete with Mark Carney. Uh, we've just in talks now with our primary miner in Iceland to take control of the mining of StartCoin inside StartCoin Holdings. Uh, this way, our ability to expand the public domain against these central bankers from hell will increase. We want to take the market cap of StartCoin up to 20, 30, 40 million. That's the goal. And I think that's the, this, this is a step in that direction. That's good. We get away from these guys who say they can't forecast and yet they continue to forecast, that they have a failed ideology and, and still we uh, continue to abide by their ideology. And we're going to look at some headlines relating to that today because there's a tweet from Jamie McGeever. He says, how accurate have IMF's forecasts been on Greece? Judge for yourself. And he links to this chart, IMF forecast for Greece and reality. So in 2010, they predicted that Greece would decline by 4% instead of declined by 4.9%. For 2011, the IMF predicted that Greece would fall by 2.6%, their GDP, instead it fell by 7.1%. Then in 2012, they predicted that it would increase by 1.1%, their GDP, following their measures, their IMF Troika measures. Instead, it declined by 7%. And in 2013, they predicted a growth rate of 2.1%. Instead, it fell by 4.2%. Uh, well, let me comment on that. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you would never expect the IMF to make accurate forecasts because you would never expect a Wall Street economist to make an accurate forecast because they never make accurate forecasts. Because economics is not a science, like chemistry or physics, where you have experimentation and you can judge the validity of your theories by the success of your repeatable experiments. But there are no such repeatable experiments where you get the same results in economics. It's not a science. The only thing that matters in geopolitics and global economics is cash flow control. Control the cash flow. Control the IMF. Control the Federal Reserve Bank. Control the your, uh, Bank of England. And you control the politics. You control the population. Again, when we control StartCoin, we'll be able to control the public domain. That's the, this is nonsensical to even suggest that Christine Lagarde could forecast her way out of a Dominic Strauss-Kahn sex orgy. She couldn't because it's impossible because it's not in the nature of the, of this, of, of the genre here. But I would also posit that uh, you could look at, say, the de whole derivatives market or the whole collateralized debt obligation market and the packaged mortgages. They pretended that it was, they predicted, they forecasted that all of these mortgages would be great and they would continue to make their payments and all that stuff, but they knew they were going to fail. Let me interject again. It, okay. It, it's not about being able to forecast using numbers. It's about using numbers as a sales tool. That's what I was going to say. So they're, well, not, just they're, they're not going to pitch a Troika bailout of Greece. They're not going to predict it by if they, and, and impose these measures and say, by the way, this is going to cause a 7.0% decline in GDP for the next five years. They're not the, nobody would buy the pitch then. Uh, the Greek people would not have allowed the Troika, the, the government to accept the bailout back then. Because it's a sales tool, yeah. like a papal indulgence. Give me the Pope money and you go to heaven. Or in marketing, some soap company used to say, we're 99% pure, relative to nothing, in the context of nothing. It's a number used to sell. These are numbers used to sell. They have no relevance because there's no science behind it. Exactly. And yet, investors continue to believe it consumers, citizens, voters continue to believe these likes, even though Alan Greenspan sits up there, blah, 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 my, my ideology has failed, and also I can't forecast no, correctly. This ideology <laughs> is that of Ayn Rand, which says yeah. there are no consequences to be greedy in society. 
And unfortunately, later in his life, he has come to realize that the consequences of his corruption are that he destroyed the United States. And here, going back to Greece, because Greece is in the headlines, this is a tweet from Zero Hedge to uh, Reuters' Jamie, and they said, here's a better chart. And this is the first red line. This is the first bailout from the IMF and the Troika to Greece. This is their estimated predictions of where GDP would go. You see how it was a small decline in GDP. This is the second bailout. Then. I guess they decided that it would grow like that. In fact, this is reality. So you see how huge the drop in Greece has been. And they continue to come up with false figures for what the uh, growth rate would be. Now, another uh, area of bad forecasts is the pension industry. You know, all these pension funds uh, forecast that their growth projections are about 8% a year to meet their obligations. And nobody ever questions that, like, well, how are you going to grow 8% a year when the global GDP is up 2% a year every year or 3%? So here is a headline from J.P. Morgan agreeing with Max Kaiser and the Kaiser Report. And it says, steep rate hikes needed to help pensions, says J.P. Morgan. So apparently there's massive, the low interest rates are causing huge uh, shortfalls in pension funds. And they look at Boeing for example. Boeing Company, for example, funneled $800 million into its pension plan last year to help close a roughly $10.5 billion gap between its defined benefit pension obligations and the value of its assets. The pension deficit still increased to $17.3 billion as interest rates fell. Well, this is right on time because the age of financialization brought in by Thatcher Reagan was based on the 30-year treasury bond, which is one of the bulwarks of the global bond market, the 30-year treasury bond. And at that time, the 30-year treasury bond was yielding 12, 13, 14%. Now it's yielding probably around 1%, 1.5%. So during that 30 years time, as central banks have manipulated interest rates down, all these pension accounts, right on cue within that 30-year window of a 30-year bond, now they're rolling over the first 30-year bonds from when they started the Reagan-Thatcher revolution. They're now being rolled over and they're going from a 14% coupon to a 1% coupon. They need seven or 8% to pay the pensioners. Uh, they're not getting it. So the pensions are gonna have to be null and void. The pensioners will get nothing and there's no way you can create this 8% required yield to pay off the pensioners in a world that's collapsing all around us and yielding one, one and a half percent on these long-term bonds. So this is exactly on cue. This is exactly what people have been, who understand mathematics, unlike economists who are salesmen for corrupt politicians. But some people like a Peter Schiff, for example, in Connecticut, who at least understands mathematics, he would very clearly point out that if you have a 30-year bond at 14% rolling over at 1%, you're going to go bankrupt, and that's exactly what's happening in these long-term pension accounts. But then you have the same ideology. The two problems that Alan Greenspan said is that we have the, the ideology and the forecasting that are uh, wrong or failed. And here on the one side, you have the ideological, um, you know, the people who are willing to sacrifice and blow up their own pension funds in order to save the bankers. They ideologically think that bankers are like wealth creators as they hand over their wealth to these guys to keep them like in, yeah, their, well, in, 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 in operation. And the other thing is that if, if you even mention that, pension, that interest rates need to go up, according to this article from the Wall Street Journal and the data from JP Morgan, they said interest rates need to rise 3%, a full 3% points now in order to close the gaps in the pension fund industry. So people in the comment section, however, would freak out saying, I have so much debt, I need 0% raise, they think. And yet, you know, they're eating, like behind them is their pension fund being destroyed. Right, the uh, property market in the UK was inflated by 150 billion, but to inflate that bubble by 150 billion, they sacrificed almost 400 billion pounds in pension yeah. income. Yeah. And the difference was kept by bankers yeah. as a bonus. Yeah. And that's the story of the last post Thatcher years. Um, the argument for basic income people make, I, we want basic income. Well, there was a, something called basic income 20 years ago. It was called the yield curve and pension accounts where people would participate in a global uh, economy based on supply and demand of money as determined by an interest rate. But once the interest rate was forced down by central bankers to make people like Jamie Dimon a billion dollars by ripping people off 24 seven, 
Uh, then we're now in a period where we have to think about basic income and recreate everything from scratch, even though we had a system called basic income called the global economy, which is now finished. Speaking of forecasts, going back to Europe, back to the failed Greek state, and here we have Greece as a sideshow. The Eurozone has failed and Germans are its victims too. So looking at the forecast at the origin of the creation of the Eurozone, it says, take this from Oscar Lafontaine, Germany's Minister of Finance, on the very eve of the launch of the Euro. He talked of, quote, the vision of a united Europe to be reached through the gradual convergence of living standards, the deepening of democracy, and the flowering of a truly European culture. Instead, of course, we saw the Euro project is not only failing to deliver on these promises of its originators, it's doing the exact opposite by eroding the living standards of ordinary Europeans. Also, for Germany, they're also destroying the living standards of the Germans. Ha, ha, ha! <laughs> That's a fat joke. No, they're not. Germany has been benefiting wildly and spectacularly. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The German corporations, they point out, have done very well, but the income of the average German, if you look at the data, the actual data, not the forecast projected, but the real data, is they haven't their wages have not increased for 14 years. But they had a massive restructuring in the early 90s, yeah. and they enjoy incredibly high living standards. They're overfunded pension accounts, overfunded uh, entitlement accounts. And the problem with the euro, as Margaret Thatcher pointed out, since we're talking about Thatcher Reagan, was that you don't want to reunify East and West Germany. And exactly what she feared has happened. It's, as I've said, I'm sorry to have to put it this way, people, but we do have the Fourth Reich amongst us here in Europe, and they are uh, rolling over Greece. From the very beginning, this guy seems to think that what the originators used to sell the euro was actually... Was, was a, hokum, was, 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 was hokum. forecasting they, nonsense. They, they knew, because, in, in fact, they say, look at any of the post-crisis... Uh, what the solution has always been, and has been to cut workers' pay. All across Europe, this has been the solution to cut workers' pay, never to downsize the size of the financial industry, never to downsize the derivatives. And they point out that this is expressly what the European Commission, the European Central Bank, and the IMF are telling Greece, make workers redundant, pay those still in a job much less, and slash pensions for the elderly. But it's not just Greece. Nearly every meeting of the wise folk in Brussels and Strasbourg comes up with the same communique for reform of the labor market in order to make way for more corporations, more banks, more derivatives, more fraud. T tip, more, more fake blah, blah, forecast. blah. All right, well, you know, more of the same. We got to go. <laughs> Bye. Well, stay tuned for the second half. Hold on. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Marco Byrne of goldcore.com. The price of gold and silver have remained pretty much flat for the past few years, but that doesn't mean there hasn't been some uh, excitement going on behind the scenes, right, Mark? Absolutely, a huge amount of stuff bubbling under the surface. There's a lot of bubbling, huh? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Low-level bubbles that I think will come to the surface. Well, one of the biggest trends, stage. certainly in gold, is the emergence of crypto. And you've got, uh, for example, uh, BitGold bought goldmoney.com. There's other kind of deals in the works. Uh, I know BitReserve has got um, gold and silver and other commodities they've, they've digified on the cloud, inside the cloud. What, what's your thought about this? Well, a very interesting space right now. And it, it sort of speaks to the risks that are in the, the financial system, the monetary system, the payment system, stuff that we've been talking about for years uh, and people are realizing there's opportunities. So the opportunities earlier on in the decade were more in the gold and silver space and everybody was working towards that. And we saw the likes of gold money, uh, bullion vault, people like that, and uh, people who were good on both the bullion and also they had good tech in terms of their websites and online trading and all the rest. Then, obviously, uh, we had the, the big correction in the gold price, the silver price, and we've had a mini bear market for the last three or four years. Uh, and cryptocurrencies come on the scene, and you've been a great proponent of them, as you were uh, with gold and silver previously. And I suppose the cryptocurrency thing, it's, it's getting to the stage where uh, I think people aren't seeing the traction. Some people in certain sectors, uh, it is quite a sexy thing. A lot of people have gone into it, and it's done very well. But I think people are trying to figure out how do they make a commercial model out of it. And at the same time, the gold and silver people are struggling because uh, the volumes are down in terms of the sales. So they're trying to figure out how do they make their model work. So I think they're beginning to look and see, right, there are synergies here. There are. Well, there's two things that are being uh, entering into the internet for the first time now. Uh, the banking system has been resistant to be P2P network affied, mm. like we saw in the music industry and the film industry and the document industry. and. And not, you know, Halsey Minor created uh, Salesforce, another cloud-based service. Um, you know, the banking industry has been resistant, but now mm -hmm. banks are being crushed essentially by the blockchain. The blockchain is 
basically reinventing the entire banking system and people can create banks outside of the current system, outside of the current infrastructure. And then in the gold and silver market as well, that industry is now being, is turning into, you know, Napster meets the gold and silver market. It's completely changing. Uh, now for people in, let's say, a country like Greece, where the banks, there's been a huge run in the banks because the IMF, you talk about rapacious creditors and terrorists, certainly Christine Lagarde qualifies as both. And their, their ability to move gold and silver out of the bank physically is a bit tough, but on a blockchain like a Bitgold, they can do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Greece, we actually have clients in Greece and, and the Greeks love the British gold sovereign. That's been their gold vehicle of choice for years, you know. Well, you tend to love your oppressor. Throughout yeah, history, you know, you, you fall, it's the uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, yeah, you fall yeah. in love with the person who's uh, kidnapped you. And so people buy British sovereigns. Uh, they worship the queen and because they have a mental illness. Yeah, yeah. we and, don't in Ireland, though, interesting enough. But the Greeks well, Ireland, you know, yeah. they couldn't escape, could they, up there in the north? They no. uh, have still, unfortunately, are being occupied. But uh, now, when, when Cyprus fell apart and the bail-ins began, uh, we saw the price of Bitcoin soar. Traditionally, it would have been the price of gold. Uh, you know, that's the thing. It didn't inherit that the um, flight to safety mm. play. It yep. went into dig yep. it went into crypto. Mm. Uh, but maybe if these two are merging, gold can catch up. Maybe. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think so. Absolutely. I, I think. I mean, there's a huge amount of documentary evidence to suggest there was manipulation going on with the gold price, and that the gold price was capped. So it could have given a false signal in effect, and it'll be interesting to see. We all know another crisis is coming. The question is when rather than if, and uh, the, all the imbalances are there in the system, they're building up again. So uh, I, I think, uh, and a lot of it is down to what happens in terms of the physical marketplace and what happens with the comics inventories and whether we have this default that many of us have been talking about for years. I think that's the only thing that will ultimately set At the, the comics. Exactly, exactly. I think that's the only no, thing that will set the, the, the problem is they can settle for cash. So if they're short bullion, they can issue paper. And so technically they can never really be default in that sense because they can settle for paper. So, uh, and they have access to unlimited paper mm. because in the New York Fed, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan, of course they're, they, they are the confetti masters. Mm. They, they can print unlimited amounts of, they shoot it out of a confetti cannon yeah, and, yeah. and they can settle all those contracts with the confetti cannon blast. So, I mean, how are they going to default? I mean, they, because they just settle for nonsensical paper. Well, a lot of people in the futures market actually take delivery. So particularly the, the large dealers and that, they use the, the futures market and they take delivery. So if they actually default in terms of the physical deliveries at some stage. They'll deliver with paper. Well, That's the way it's that, set up. Well, that would be a technical default. And then there would be an awareness of what the limits of supplies are in the marketplace. And then you will see huge buying come into the marketplace, which we haven't we seen We already seen know what before. the limits yeah. of supplies are in the marketplace because we know that the price is, uh, th there's huge bottlenecks. People are not able to get gold. Uh, yeah, yeah, take yeah. a look at, uh, you know, Russia is, is buying, trying to buy gold. They can't get delivery of the gold they want to buy. Hmm. My sources tell me Russia wants to buy another 5,000 tons of gold. They can't source it. It's yeah, not on yeah. the market. They can't get it. China's out there all over the world, you know, collecting gold. You know, they're on the streets looking for yeah. little gold flecks. They yeah. can't get the gold. Buying there's no mines. gold around right now. Buying mines all over the world. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the fact that there's a supply shortage is not a factor in the price. The I price is they plus the paper confetti, and they dump those paper contracts. I think at this moment in time, absolutely it is. But I think that, that will change. because I, I, And I do think the comics, you know, that, that it's, a, it's a physical default. If the word goes around that the comics doesn't have the gold, then the market starts to say, right, the paper price, the spot price we look at every single day is actually irrelevant. And then we will start to see the pre premiums move up. And I think the actual spot price then will, the spot price may actually become irrelevant in time. It may become more a, a physical price, you know. Um, you think so, the spot price will become irrelevant and there's basically a black market in gold set by the actual uh, transactions of the physical gold. Now, you know, in keeping in this theme, we see that the Texas Bullion Depository repatriated their gold <coughs> from the New York Fed. New York Fed being in the clutches of the hardcore ISIS of financial terrorist J.P. Morgan. Why? Uh, why did they do that? I think we know the answer, but tell us, if you have a little bit of background on this, talk a little bit about this. Well, yeah, as you said, I, I suppose the uh, New York Fed is the, the heart of the, the giant vampire squid, you know, and I think the Texans, uh, they're nervous. They're a bit like the Germans, the, the Dutch, and most of the people around the world are, are worried about their You gold. know, it's interesting, because in, uh, in America now, you got this north-south divide again. 
in, mm. in a controversy yeah. over the Confederate flag, which was the flag of the 13, I believe, southern states that were seceding from America during the Civil War. And now, because the economy is so bad, the Civil War animosities have bubbled up again. Mm. There's a race war has broken out in America. And in Texas, of course, and the New York, we're at bitter loggerheads during the Civil War. So now Texas is saying to the New York Fed, you know, they're putting on their Confederate, waving their Confederate flag and saying, deliver our gold, Yankee, because, you know, we don't trust you. And I think they're, they have a good point. Nobody, yeah. if, if, you, if, you're, if your future to, is determinant on trusting the New York Fed, you know, blow your brains out today and save, <laughs> save yourself some hassle because they're the most crooked of them all. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's a, there's a trend there potentially. I mean, if Texas does it, then what's to stop other states doing it? And I think it sends out a, a signal around the world that if even the states within the United States don't trust the federal government or the so-called Federal Reserve, which, as we all know, is not federal and they have no reserves, you know, th that shows the degree of uh, uh, so, uh, complacency that's in the marketplace, um, and, and it just shows the risks as well. But, I think but is it complacency or is it financial oppression? I mean, I could say that a prison population is complacent, because if they're anything but complacent, they'll be go to the chair and get electrocuted. In America now, uh, they have something called uh, belligerent, uh, unprivileged belligerence. It's how the Pentagon classifies any journalist okay. who disagrees with their form of terrorism and financial terrorism. Mm. Court, now they can be, according to others, they can be shot. They can be shot on sight. So that's the new type of subversive. That's yeah. the new thing. Mm. So why would anyone... And when you have a government like that, as a custodian of your gold, you don't have any gold. Mm. Uh, well, you know what I'm saying? It's like if Hitler was your, uh, the custodian of your gold, you know, you can't call him up on the phone and say, hello, Adolf, can you deliver our gold? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's not going to happen because he's a dictator psychopath, as is Dudley at the New York Fed. Dictator, psychopath, Pentagon, murdering the, the old so adage is the kindest word I can on this TV show. Yeah, the old adage is if you don't hold it, you don't own it. So and that's absolute. And these guys realise that, and, uh, and and they're taking their goal back. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I agree, Evan. You said there, and I mean, ultimately they. Uh, Yet I think they see the writing on the wall. They realise that the, the entire uh, uh, gold, uh, fractional uh, gold banking system is on its leg, last legs in effect. And uh, I think that's another signal of that. And it's just, it's not even being covered in the mainstream media whatsoever, you know, <clears throat> even though it's a very, very significant development, you know. 99.9% you know, of the people out there wouldn't even be aware of it, even though it's actually a huge thing. And there's a second part of that was equally uh, as big and wasn't covered, that they're actually positioning to use gold as a currency. So it's not simply a story about repatriating gold, <coughs> excuse me, akin to the Germans, the Austrians, uh, uh, the Venezuelans and Chavez. They are actually positioned to use gold as a currency in the event of problems with the monetary system, the financial system, uh, and problems with the SWIFT system that you, you, you've all frequently uh, discussed, you know. So if a state within the United States of America uh, is actually doing that, I mean, it just shows that a complete lack of confidence in, in the financial system and in, indeed in the dollar, you know. And I think they're positioning themselves for this currency reset that we've all been talking about for a long time, you know. So, so if um, the sanctions that are being imposed against Russia at the moment, and there's talk about more sanctions, they're talking about arming folks in Ukraine, NATO is talking about making in increasing incursions east, a, a complete violation of all international treaties, complete violations of all human rights, complete violations of all uh, treaties. The plan B for Russia, China, Iran is to create a gold-backed currency, mm. which would utterly destroy the United States. Absolutely. In yeah, one day. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, don't I mean, even Jim Rickards, who's, a, who's like a neocon, says during a war game scenario, that if China and Russia adopt a gold-backed currency, the U.S. is essentially been foreclosed on mm. and can flush itself down the toilet. Now, why, I mean, Victoria Nuland, who's another psychopath, and she's over there in Ukraine orchestrating her coup, if, if she pushes this further, does she understand that she's flushing her own country down the toilet because all they have to do is go to a gold-backed currency and the entire paper pyramid nightmare that is the United States of America goes crashing down into the toilet? No, I don't think there is that sort of joined up thinking going on, you know, I don't think there is an awareness of these huge multi risks. So when you I, talk about financial illiteracy, you have not only is George Osborne, David Cameron, but you got to add Victoria Newland, Vic 
Christine Lagarde over there at the IMF, she hmm. says things that come out of her mouth. You would, you wouldn't, you'd, you'd be shocked if they came out of a two-year-old. Yeah, you'd, you'd, absolutely. You'd, you'd, be, you'd say, my God, well, how did that happen? Well, absolutely. In recent days, I think people realize because the Greece situation, it's actually for the first time the penny has been in the trough for people that what is being done to Greece is just outrageous, you know. And I think even the mainstream is beginning to say, hang on a second here, you know, this, just from basic social justice, this is just wrong, you know. So I think, and, and she's always been a proponent of, of social justice and she talks Yeah, she talks, talks it again talk. because she's exactly, a pathological yeah. liar. Yeah. Well, you know, I'd love to talk more about Ireland, but we got to go, we're out of time. So Marco Byrne, thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. That's going to do it for this episode of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Marco Byrne of goldcore.com, a place where I think you can actually go and get gold and silver and all kinds of stuff. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.